in this demonstration, I'm going to go over jelly printing basics, which I mean, by that I mean how to roll out ink, like a very even um, coating. And then I'm gonna print uh, a variety of textures I've collected. I will say when printmaking, organization is, is key. So what I mean by that is, you're going to have your brayer. You got to have your your setup here. The jelly plate. I like to put it on a surface. This is a piece of palette paper. A cookie sheet works well. Something that you can it peels up easily from. So here's my workspace. Then I've got all of my paints ready to go. I'm going to try and use up some of these tubes of slow drying open. Um, and then I also have the retarding agent, which I can mi mix in to regular uh, acrylic paint. Then, since I'm printing texture, I've got all my textured items ready to go. And I, I went a little crazy with this. Um, I went to, let's see, the hardware store. I, I had to get that. I went to the Japanese market and got all these funny little textured items uh, to explore. So we're going to be getting comfortable printmaking with the jelly plate, but then we'll have this whole stash of papers that will make um, a collage piece of art from next week. So speaking of paper, I've got a stack of rice paper ready to go. I've got some drawing paper. Um, I love printing on brown grocery bags, which I've cut up. And then I purchased um, some of this print, Jack Richardson printmaking paper. So this one I like because it's a little bit thicker. And if I want to do more painting on my print, um, it's not going to it's not going to warp. Uh, whereas the rice paper and the drawing paper might the paper bag. That's pretty durable. This will probably be okay. So I've got all my things ready to go. Um, it's also nice if you can string up a clothesline. It, you know, it could be between two chairs and clip up your prints. Otherwise, they're just all over the floor, which is the situation I'm dealing with uh, right now. Okay, so I'm going to. You know, I'm going to start with the yellow little bit of yellow oxide. I'm just going to squeeze it. That should be plenty right there. That's about, what is that? Half a teaspoon, something like that. Okay, so when rolling, I usually roll, and I kind of do this thing where I roll and lift. You're not pushing in super hard. It's pretty light motion. You want to go back and forth both directions until you get an even distribution. And if I can shine the light on that there, you can see the even distribution because these, I call them little tacky marks. It should look like um, the ocean on a calm day. Okay, so there's that. I am going to start with, so I was at this garden store and this is a piece of, um, it's cork, had to have it. So let's see how this prints. And the cork will get some paint on it, but that's okay because I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with the cork. I may end up painting it. Okay. Let's see how that turns out. I'm using the print paper. Okay, not as fabulous as I would have hoped for. It might have been more dramatic if I'd used a darker paint. There's still more ink on there. I am going to pull some of that off. The second print is what you call the ghost print. I usually like the ghost print better. You'll see why in a minute when I pull another print. I'm gonna use a darker color though. Okay, yeah, I like that it's a little more subtle. You get a little more color gradation. 
Okay, I'm going to go with my darker Van Dyke Brown end of the tube here. And I don't bother to rinse my brayer. I just keep going and let the colors mix. What's great about the jelly plate is, and letting the paints mix is you get, um, there's an element of chance. Okay, now if you wanted to get rid of some of your paint before going to the next color, I have this sheet over here and I can just roll that paint off and clean my brayer. And oftentimes this roll off sheet ends up looking really great and being a nice work of art. Okay, so I went to Art From Scrap. I got this tile sample for 50 cents. Pushing down fairly firmly. Okay, that looks, I'm kind of excited about that. Hope that comes out because I've got some of that other color going on there. You can also roll with the brayer too. You'll get a little bit of paint on the back, but that's okay. Okay, I got lucky there. All right, I had some of the paint from below and um, that worked out really nicely. Now I'm going to pull a ghost. I'm using drawing paper here. Okay, there's the ghost. There's the first one. That looks nice. Looks like, you know, beach rocks, river rocks. Okay, let's see if I can get a little bit more out of this tube. Yeah, one more print. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do what's called an ombre, which you're fading one color into the other. So here's Van Dyke Brown. We'll roll some of that off. And then I fade it into that other one. Okay, I'm going to use my funny, I don't know what this is, a duster. Okay. Another thing you can do if, um, actually, I'm not quite ready to do that. I'm going to print on top of a previous print. I'm going to skip that. Okay, this is the rice paper. It has a little bit of a rough side and a smooth side. I'm printing on the smooth side. The nice thing about the rice paper is you can pretty quickly see if your inks are transferring. So that's transferring. What's not as great about it is if you want to add a uh, paint more on top of it. It's it's more fragile. Okay. There's that. That's this thing. Okay. Now I'm going to show you, let's say you don't have any open acrylic, um, but you've got retarding agent. I mix about mm, two, three drops in there. And then mix that in with my palette knife. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate this floral mesh. Everybody seems to like this. 
and I have a whole bunch of it on my front porch. It's still available if you want to come and get some. Okay, I'll do rough side on the rice paper now. Okay, here's the first print. Here's the second print. Which I much prefer because you get I get all the texture of that uh, floral netting. I get more of a gradation, totally different than the first one. Okay. Now I'm gonna try, I'm gonna just drop on, this is not um, open. It's a fluid acrylic. It is warm today. So I'm doing this, like what if you don't have um you don't have any open you can you could use fluid acrylic if you have those cheapy crafts craft ones that's fine too you're just you're have to, going to have to work faster okay uh, i'm going to try the egg carton Okay, that is actually pretty cool. It looks um, <clears throat> like a textile. All right. Back to the print paper. Pretty cool. All right, then I've got the ghost. So I'm working fast and furious here. And as you're noticing, I'm getting globs of paint. So, you know, keeping your work area organized with printmaking is important. Okay, didn't pull up that much, but it's leaving some dried paint there, which is really cool. That's an opportunity I'm gonna take advantage of right now. I'm gonna show you how to um, print with dried paint. I just have to find a color. Okay, so here, here is that, it's like this deco art. It's this cheapy craft paint for Michaels. These are pretty good with the jelly plates. So if you want to work with dried paint, we've got dried paint right here. Once it's dry, then I can put on some of this and Cross my fingers, this is going to work. This is a metallic green. Put on a little too much, so I'm rolling some of that off. Okay. Fingers crossed. Pressing pretty firmly here. Okay, looks like it's going to work. There is your dried paint technique. If you're confused by it, you can come back and watch the video again. Um, let's see if I've got anything. I think I'll end with the two other things. So someone gave me this, it's like a basmati rice bag and fabrics like jeans. You can print jeans and get all this zipper detail. I actually find the inside of the bag with these things kind of interesting. So 
going to give that a go. using the rice paper. Okay, that's really cool. It's almost photographic, the level of detail that it picks up. Looks like something very old. Um, Okay, I lied. I'm going to do one more. This whole thing, it's so addictive. You're going to see. It's just, it's really hard to stop. Okay, I'm going to do this Indian yellow. Okay, here's the sponge. Interesting texture from the Japanese market. I don't know if that's going to show up. That's pretty faint. Interesting. I'm seeing it. It's pretty faint, but I'm 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 picking up. I think it's how the ink rolled out. But that's kind of interesting. Um, okay, I'm going to dry brush. You can make brush marks, which usually transfer really nicely. Get a little thicker paint going on here. Gonna scrape through with my textured palette knife. And I'm gonna print again on this piece. Not so thrilled with it. So if you have prints you don't really like, you can print on them again. Okay. So you can see the power of just painting directly with the brush. You pick up on all those textured fibers. A little bit of paint left here on that one. I'm going to go back to my first print. Voila, there we go. 